Our next script is titled Miles by Joey Clark Jr. After losing their parents to the opioid crisis, a 12-year-old girl and her little brother run away from their foster parents to get back to their dog, Miles. These are the foster parents, Samuel and Courtney, doing their best to welcome Riley and Nolan into their home with a nice dinner. In this scene, Nolan, only six years old, is still trying to understand that his dad has died and his mom is likely heading to prison, while Riley wants no part of her new living situation. Interior, Cole home, dining room, evening. A steak, potatoes, asparagus, red wine for Courtney and Samuel. Nolan struggles to cut his steak. Do you need a hand? Uh, I should have thought of that, I'm sorry. My mom cuts chicken smaller. <laughs> well, is this better? Yeah. When will we see my mom? We're not. Get used to it. Why? Because the law said. Well, that's not entirely. Right it. now, the authorities feel it's. You uh, shouldn't lie to him. Not everyone who has kids is really the best for them. Some people. No, don't you don't say that. But uh, what <laughs> Courtney is trying to say is some people have kids before they're ready. Um, maybe they have personal issues they need to tend to first. And that's what I was about to say. <laughs> and some people who are ready can't, and they are willing and able to serve as the parents for little kitties who need them. That's us. Oh, you can't have kids? <laughs> See, my ovaries, the place that makes babies. This, her baby factory. We're sick. No, you, you can say cancer. But you have to say baby factory? <laughs> he knows what, what cancer is. It's appropriate knowledge for six-year-olds, right? Well, you're the adult. But I'm better now. I just can't have kids unless we were to adopt, which is where you come in. Potentially. Yeah. Yes, potentially. Right. Um, we're very happy for the chance to help raise you for now. And if it does go that way, then forever. Does that make sense? Nolan doesn't eat a steak. The others eat in silence. Courtney takes a noticeably long gulp of wine. <clears throat> Can you move my bed to Riley's room? Interior coal home, Riley's room, night. Samuel drags, drags Nolan's mattress through the door. He drops it on the floor. Courtney puts the sheets on. Nolan watches on, holding his pillow. Well, maybe just for a few nights until you're more acclimated. Acclimated? Comfortable, until you're more comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Interior coal home, restroom, night. Riley looks through the drawers as she brushes her teeth. Hand soaps, towels, then, a small coin purse. She spits out the toothpaste. Curious, she opens the coin purse. She finds two $20 bills. She peeks out the bathroom door. From, from down the hall, she can hear her foster parents talking. She sets the cash on the counter and walks down there to the door. She listens through the door. We should take them to see their mom before she goes to prison. I mean, it'd be easy. She's detoxing at the university hospital. Absolutely not. Their dumb dog would probably be more comforting. <laughs> That's not a joke. Drug addicts should not have kids. Should not. Roddy walks back to the bathroom and pockets the cash. Smart girl. 